In Creo Parametric 9.0, cross-hatching received a number of enhancements in drawings. But to set the stage, let's start out in Creo 8.0. Here I have a drawing open. I have a view with a cross-section. Let's go to edit that cross-section. I will pick the cross-hatching. Then I can hold down the right mouse button and then click the Properties command. Uh -uh. Nope. You can see that we have the menu manager open up with all the different commands in here. And yeah, this is not so great. Also, one other thing that I want you to notice, look at the highlighting of the component that is currently cross-hatched and selected. All right, now that we see what it looks like in Creo 8.0, let's see all the wonderful enhancements in 9.0. Okay, same drawing, but Creo 9.0. Hey, I've got my hatching, let's go to it, and then I will left click on it. And here I get a pop-up menu that warns me about converting the XCH format to PAT. That's great. We also have a mini toolbar. I will talk more about that later. But as soon as you click on the cross hatching, you get a nice edit hatching tab. You've got the nice dashboard interface. Let's take a look at a bunch of the different areas in here. So first off, if we go to the hatch gallery command, hey, we have a number of default cross hatchings available to us. We've got some ANSI styles. We've got some ISO styles. There are some user defined styles for, for different materials. And we have some converted from the XCH format. So real easy to pick what you want to use from the various different ones. The second thing to take a look at is the operations group of commands. So you can copy hatching from one entity to another. You could use the hatching that's been used with another material. You could use a solid color in place of cross hatching. And this button allows you to use the model's hatching itself. And if I go to the operations drop down menu, here's the command where we can convert to the updated .pat file format with all the wonderful bells and whistles that it has. All right, before I show other stuff, let's get out of the cross hatching for a moment. Let's take a look at some of the enhancements in the find tool for searching for different cross hatching. And to get to it, well, here is the little binoculars icon. And if you go to the drop down list, there are a number of choices that you have available in here now. So for example, here you can search for draft hatching. In other words, if someone went to the sketch tab and they created cross hatching manually here in the drawing, hey, you could search for where that appears. But let's also go to the drop down list, a few other different choices. You can search for a hatched area, a hatched body, or a hatched component. And speaking of hatch component, let's select that. There is a new property option. And for the property option, you can specify whether it is included, excluded, whether there's a shown hatch, a hidden hatch, hatched or filled. So for example, if you want to find all the included ones. Hey, right now it is set to yes. You could change that to no. Another method of searching for different things, let me check the box to include the submodels. And then if I go into the look for drop down list, well, now since I'm including the submodels, there are a whole bunch more entities available for selection. I'm going to go to the sketch option and there's an option for property. And let's change the property here to hatched. And so you can find any 2D sketches in a part model, for example, that has hatching turned on. So a few different options to enable you to be able to select your different hatches on different drawing sheets. Let's close out of here. All right, let me go back to the hatching and I'm going to left click on it. And when I left click on it, well, I already told you about that message that opens up about converting it, but you also get a mini toolbar. And from the mini toolbar, you can rotate the pattern in a counterclockwise direction or a clockwise direction. So those are two different 
commands that you have available to you. I'm going to go to the operations overflow menu and convert to the modern PAT style format. Once I did that, I do have the ability to change different settings in here, like for the spacing and the colors, but also take a look when I select the hatching with the left mouse button. Now I have the additional controls to double the size of the spacing or to have the size of the spacing. So new mini toolbar. Oh yeah, besides the mini toolbar, if I select and then right mouse click and hold from the pop-up menu, here you have some of those different commands that are available in the operations group. You can copy the hatch, you can use the material hatch, use a solid hatch, or use the model hatch. And there's also this other one for recreating the hatch angles. All right, let's deselect everything out of here. Another big enhancement is there is something called the hatch tree. I'm going to go to this icon over in the drawing tree. When I click on that, we get another additional table here. And there's some icons up at the top. I'm going to use the expand all icon. And so now we can see all the different hatching that's included in the model. And so, for example, there's this part. You can see it highlighted in the graphics area. And when I click on it, we get all the different options from the mini toolbar. But here we have a drop down list where we can say, hey, we want this one to be excluded from hatching. And let me deselect. And now there's no longer cross hatching for that part. We can go back and say, nope, let's have it included. Let me repaint the screen. And so now we have brought the hatching back. Another option that you have is to add an additional column. Let's go to the columns. There is another column for the hatch tree for format. Let's click the OK button. That'll indicate any of your hatches, whether they have the PAT modern format or the outdated XCH format. And one other thing to take a look at in the hatch tree, if we go to the tree filters, that brings up a dialog box where you can choose whether excluded objects are displayed. And for the different hatch nodes, if you want to see hatch components, hatch bodies, hatched faces, or hatched areas, you can select which ones you want visible in the hatch tree. Let's cancel out of there. Uh, let's see, next thing to take a look at, let's go to our options. If we go to File, Options, and then Options, there is a detailing group, and there are four new options here down at the bottom. You can specify the maximum angle variations per section, and the choices are six angles. Those are going to be like 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 75 degrees. Or you could choose two angles that'll give you just 45 degrees and 135 degrees or automatic. It doesn't limit the number of angles for your rotated sections. And let's hover the mouse over the option. As always, if you hover your mouse over it, you can see the corresponding config.pro option. This is hatch pattern auto rotation. Next one that we have in here, the hatch pattern rotation interval. That is 15 degrees. And then we have one for the maximum hatch pattern update time. By default, it's set to 3.5 seconds. You can change that value. And then, do you want to display converted patterns in hatch galleries? And we have the choices show in drawing hatch gallery, show in all hatch galleries, or hide in all hatch galleries. And so that is good for the new different options. Very last thing to show you for hatching is actually in a model. Let me go to the drop down list and switch over to the assembly that this comes from. You can see one of the cross sections is visible. If you go to the tools tab, there is a new command for the hatch designer. And this opens up a utility that allows you to create your own custom hatches. So here we have our lines and we have the angle at 45 degrees. Delta is using a value of one. If you click on the plus icon, you can get an additional line. The first line ends up showing up in 
gray, but the active one is showing up in blue. Here we have our different available fonts, so I could choose a different font for the second line. And then we have options to increase the spacing or decrease the spacing in between them. And let's add one more line in here. And for this line, I'm going to change the angle. Let's put this at 135 degrees. So it will be perpendicular to the two previous lines. So you have all these wonderful tools for creating your own custom hatches. You can use the arrows for choosing which of the entities is active that you would want to modify. And then you could choose to save your brand new hatching so that you could use it later on again. And if you save it in the correct location, hey, it's gonna show up in your hatch gallery. So again, new utility, just be aware that that's available in parts and assemblies. It's not available in the drawing itself. So there you have it, a whole bunch of wonderful enhancements to cross-hatching in Creo Parametric 9.0.